Welcome back. This is Weeknights. And we are Two Chains. Two Chains. One neck. No, two necks. I don't know. That's what he used to say. Yeah, but... Two Chains. But one neck. That's not us today. So no, we are two necks. Yeah. Two Chains. Two, chain. two, two necks. necks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two earrings. Four ears. You know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Waiting for you to put your hoops on. I don't own hoops, you know? Sorry. And I never had two holes anyway. I only had one. Ooh. Way back in the Dizzy. Back in the Dizzy. Well, one earring in my ear anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave that one there. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm JD, a.k.a. He Who Pods, and I'm here with... I'm Dash. It's nice to see you guys again. Oh, said F all those AKAs today. Let me sit up. Hold on. Oh, it's <laughs> if Dash ain't that wooded, I really guess I got hard. to be extra wooded today. Hold on. Let me, let me, hold on. Let me get ready, you know. Hold on. I got you. Hold on. Let me, don't even worry. All right. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> On Wednesdays, it's just a little harder to get over the phone. To get over the hump. That's why they call it hump day. Because it's hard to get hard to get over that sometimes. So I understand. Yeah. I get it. Midweek. Right. So, you know, we look forward to the rest of the week. But it's just been a day. I understand. No worries. I got you. I, I carry this. I put the chains on. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks. No problem, Bob. All right. Where you want to start? Just tell me that. Um, I guess, I guess we should start with the bad news first. All right. <laughs> yep, definitely bad news. So DJ Mr. C, mm -hmm. uh, a Brooklyn legend, a hip hop legend, passed away, um, 57 years old. At the moment, we don't know the cause of death, but his death has been confirmed by his family. Um, Hot 97 put out statements, uh, different people who are close to him have begun putting up posts and statements uh, about his passing. Most people know him uh, for his ties to Biggie. Uh, and Biggie, apparently. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mr. C is is had pivotal roles in the discovery of Biggie and also uh, a pivotal role in the career of Big Daddy Kane. So he's a hip hop legend. Yeah. Um, this one, this one is 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 tough. And a New York legend. And a New York legend, a Brooklyn legend, all of the above. And so this one is uh, this one's this one's heavy tonight. Yeah. And um, I just hope he passed peacefully. Uh, yeah. no, that's that's all I can say. Um, you know, he he was also a DJ on High ninety seven for a long time. He just, he, we just, the culture owes him a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that he wasn't always seen in the greatest light after a certain point, but I don't think that should be the focus. I think the focus should be his, his contributions to hip hop, his legacy in hip hop. And uh, I think that's the things that we should focus on. Those are the things that we should focus on. Uh, and I think that we should, we should celebrate him. Uh, as soon as I saw the post that you sent to our chat about him passing, I immediately thought of Letter to Big. There's a Jada Kiss song called Letter to Big. And he said, uh, Mr. C, Mr. C and BK still holding it down. Yeah. And I immediately thought of that. And I said, damn, that's crazy. Uh, he's, so, he's really young. you know, 57 is young. My dad is older yeah. than 57 by like a year. Yeah. He would not like me saying that, but currently he's you 57. Just completely outed him there. You didn't. You could have just. My dad said, is my, currently my dad, 57. My dad is about that age. <laughs> my dad is my dad is currently 57 like, right now. Actually, did I just the thought math about for it. Us. No, my dad is actually 57 right now. I just thought about it. Oh, His birthday is coming, and he's currently 57. That's not. It's not old at all. No, it's super. Not. It's it's rather young. Not super young. I take away the super, but it's 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 really young. Oh, it's young, yeah. It's so young. Much more life to live. Yeah, 
I mean, um, I want to see triple digits. I don't know about anybody else, but I would love to be a buck. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind it. If I was... I know, I know some people well, feel the it, opposite. It depends. I think it depends on what type of state you're in. I think if I'm still... like, I still have my mobi- mobility and I still have my faculties about me, then, you know, let's go. Let's do another year. Right. Uh, but I think sometimes that's not a lot of people's circumstances. Um, yeah. you, you end up in a... Um, a lot of people end up losing their memory for one reason or another or for one condition or another um, or they have mobility issues and things like that and a whole host of other things that start happening to your body when you, as you get older. So I can understand why people don't necessarily want to want to live to be 100, but um, I, I just feel like I'll take what I can get, you know? Um, I, I would, I would love to live as long as possible, but you know, uh, wherever life takes me, I just hope that at the end of my life, I had a full life, um, and was, and I was a happy person. You know what I mean? Like outside of that, however it's going to be, it's going to be so, um, but to bring it back, um, yeah, I, 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 it's like you said, he's so pivotal to uh, Big Daddy Kane, um, mm-hmm. Biggie, to just hip hop in general, to New York in general, like yeah, just a lot of legacy there. I did learn a fun fact about him to let in the mood a little bit. I did not know this. I don't know if you knew this. It's really funny and silly, but did you know that he had a tropical fantasy endorsement back in the day? And he helped curate one of the flavors. Definitely did not. I just learned this about him. I was look I was I was looking him up just to make sure that I had all the facts straight for, for us to talk about him. And that's like one of the facts that that's like one of the bullet points that Complex had done an article about him. Of course Complex would know. Of course. They said other things that were very important. Um, they I'm talked sure. about Biggie, they talked about Big Daddy Kane, but it was like an article about six things. I think it was six things you didn't know about Mr. C. Um, and one of them was that he had a tropical fantasy endorsement back in the day. If you don't know what tropical fantasy is, well, then this conversation is simply not for you. But if you do know what tropical fantasy is, right. I just think that's really funny. I had no idea that, that they were doing endorsements. Um, we were so day. young. We were really young. Yeah. Um, but I don't know about you, but tropical fantasy was a big part of my childhood. So Fifty cent I'm- bust down. Right. So that's that's what I'm we like, called them. Oh my I'm gonna get me a bag of chips and a fifty cent bust down. That's what exactly. we called it. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that kind of tickled me a little bit. That was the, that was like a, a bright spot. Um, I know it's silly, and honestly, if you don't know what drop fantasy is, again, I I can't help you there. <laughs> but, yeah, you probably you might not even know who Mister C is then. Right. But I thought it was cool. They even let him curate his own flavor. Why not? Yeah, so I thought that was a, a fun little little note about him that I just didn't know. And I guess how would you know? Because like you said, we were we were pretty young when that was happening. So yeah, definitely. But, but anyway, um, yeah. Well, may he rest in peace. I was just about to say yeah. R.I.P. to Mr. C. And thank you to DJ Mr. C. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't say it better myself. Yeah, this one this one's heavy. It really is. Um, all right, let's let's uh let's go to some business stuff, and then I can take off my specs. Whoa, what's going on here? Didn't mean to click on that. <clears throat> so we spoke a while ago about Paramount. Mm-hmm. At one point, they were said to be merging, possibly with Warner Brothers Discovery. And at another point, it was said merger talks are over. But now there is more business going on. With Paramount. Paramount is is doing the lot. What is going on over there? I will say they're trying to move and shake because, you know, 
I don't it's, know what else is going on. It just feels very unstable. Like a lot of the news that has come out about about Paramount in the last year or two and the shifts and the changes that they've been trying to do, like between the BET stuff and them trying to sell BET to the the streaming service stuff. It just it just yeah. feels a little all over the place. Yeah. Um, and like maybe there's something happening beneath the surface that we don't know about. I don't know. Like like this right here. Mm-hmm. This is an article from the New York Post that states that Paramount reportedly could acquire Skydance in five billion all stock deal. I gotta be honest, when I first read all stock deal, the first thing that came to my mind was succession. Yeah. Immediately I thought of succession. You gotta think of succession. All right, it says here, a deal between Paramount Global and Skydance Media could see the media conglomerate acquire the independent studio in an all-stock transaction valued at around $5 billion, the Wall Street Journal reported on Friday. Under the terms being discussed, National Amusements, which controls Paramount, would receive over $2 billion in cash in the first step of the transaction, according to the report. Separately, Skydance could provide a substantial cash infusion to Paramount, owner of Paramount Pictures Film Studio, to bolster its balance sheet and help pay down debt, the journal said, citing people familiar with the matter. Paramount and Skydance did not respond to Router's request for comment on the Wall Street Journal report outside business hours. National Amusements and its controlling shareholder, Sherry Redstone, could not be contacted immediately. That definitely makes me think about Succession, because so much about Succession was about the goddamn amusements uh, side of things. And, 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 and Sumner Redstone and, and, and Sherry, and that's always yep. been an interesting story to follow yep. uh, with, with the Redstones, so... Oh, yeah. one more thing I see here that I should say. Members of Paramount's board agreed to enter into exclusive merger talks with Skydance Media, favoring the independent studio over a $26 billion offer from private equity firm Apollo Global Management, Routers reported on Wednesday. By merging the two companies, the combined entity would have much more flexibility around what it could do with those franchises, the Wall Street Journal said adding that Redstone would get cash while investors with non-voting shares would get stock in the combined company. So, uh, let me ask you a question. What up? What would you do with $26 billion? Uh, I, first of all, I'd get the hell out of this country. Second of all, I'd buy a bunch of land. Third of all, I would do everything in my power to get custody of my daughter. Uh, and third of all, was that third of all? Final. Uh, finally, I'd, I'd disappear into the darkness. Y'all would not see me anymore. It wouldn't be any public stuff. I'd, yeah, y'all would only see me on Zoom or something like that, board of directors meetings. It'd, so it'd be like... The is over. The pod is, is over. Weeknights is over. Weeknights will have a new co-host. Oh. And it will have media deals out the wazoo. You won't even want to do weeknights anymore. You'd be producing podcasts and have your media company, you know, as a subsidiary of, I can't even say the name of my company. Right. Well, <laughs> that would be the serious. name. The name would be, the name would be, I can't say the name LLC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to do that. Yeah, that would really just be a holding company of another company of another, you know, you know the game. You said $26 billion and I was like, man, that's a lot of money. Well, nobody, yeah, nobody's getting $26 billion. Not, No, not I know. Person, but... I know, but I'm just, now, you know, you have my stock brain just went, wow, that's a lot of money. And yeah, yeah I mean, I... listen, the, the, the CEO of the company gets, what, close to... Hundred million dollars a year or something like that. So, I'm just plugging in my device. Yeah. 
motorcycle. So oh. anyway, yeah, I, I, was, just, I was about to say sound crash, loud boom, you know. No, but I I was just curious. I know I know I know that money is not going to an individual person. Um, just so we're clear, it's just a, a a hell of a lot of money. In my mind, just went, man, wow. $26 billion. What would anyone do with that amount of money? I know there are people who can tell us, but, but I'm just, just they don't talk to us. They don't talk to peons like us. I mean, listen, I wouldn't talk to peons like us. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the report. I'm joking. Lady. I'm joking. No one would know. All right, what about the report? What do you think about this? What do I think about the report? I mean, I think that I think that growth is good. I I don't have a problem with Paramount trying to expand, especially especially where we are in this age of content, mm-hmm. where yep. uh, the content that you own is 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 almost the currency itself, um, because. Mm-hmm a lot of times your content is not just sitting under you. It's also sitting somewhere else with the, uh, with the way we're living in this streaming world now. So you want as much of that to be yours as possible, because then you could go out into the marketplace and, and outsource it. Right. People, people can, people can say, Hey, we need to do this. We need to do this deal. Like Netflix can say, "Hey, like we're we're looking to get some Paramount content um, under our name," and you know, the Paramount just makes more money off of that, right? So, I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad thing. I sound very capitalistic right now. I don't think it's a bad thing, um, but I I do wonder what's going on over there. I do I do wonder they've they've. They've been there's a lot there's been a lot of things moving and and yes that could simply just mean growth, but it could also mean signs of trouble too. Yep. So I'm I'm it's... I'm curious about what their year will look like. Mm-hmm. I mean we don't we we won't know I... what are but but I think but I think we'll we'll be able to see uh, how the company changes what type of acquisitions they they end up in what type of mergers, maybe what what companies they're going to offload. I think it'll be really interesting to watch what happens to them over the next year, two years, three years, five years. Yes, I agree. I... Come on. I pulled up Skydance Media. Just to see what has Skydance Media done that I know, because I know that uh, name. I yeah, I don't know. That was something well, I meant to look up myself. Well, they did Gemini Man, Will Smith versus Will Smith. Okay. They did Jack Reacher. They did a bunch of Missing Impossibles. They did Star Trek. Uh, some of the new Star Trek films. They did GI Joe Snake Eyes. They did the two latest Terminator films. They okay, did so lots of films we know. The latest Spy Kids movie. Uh, they did True Grit, yes, lots of films we know, and they did the last Top Gun movie, which is why I was like, I know this from some Tom Cruise shit. And yes, Tom Cruise does a lot of stuff with Skydance Media, it seems. It sounds like- so, is he a part of that company? Uh, no, not that I could find, but I tried to find that. That's what I was looking into. Oh. Um, it does not say that he is one of the owners. Uh, or a key person here, but uh, uh, clearly he's got he's got stuff going on over there, which is more interesting to me because we know he just got that deal with uh, Warner Brothers. <laughs> you think this is their way in? <laughs> After Warner Brothers was like, nah, forget it. Right. You think this is their way to like bridge the gap? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because a lot of this stuff has Tom Cruise in it. Um, I'm here looking at IMDb, and IMDb says their top 30 films that they're known for. Number one is Top Gun Maverick, which is the movie that came out last year starring Tom Cruise. Number two is Mission Impossible Fallout. Number three is one of the Star Trek movies, Star Trek Beyond. 
Uh, number four is once again the Tom Cruise movie Mission Impossible Rogue Nation from 2015. Then World War Z, which is really interesting because that's from 2013. Uh, and Star Trek Into the Darkness. So they, they've done a lot of movies that we know, yeah. uh, like you said. Uh, but as I scroll here, quite a few are Tom Cruise movies. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Jack Reacher, <laughs> The Mission Impossibles, The Tomorrow War, which I believe had Tom Cruise in it, but I could be wrong. Um, the other Jack That's Reacher so film. Oh, all three? No, yeah, Jack. Oh, Jack Ryan is something else. Uh, two Jack Reacher films. You know, they they've been working with Tom Cruise for the last couple years pretty heavily. Uh, anyway, so it's really interesting. Do I think this is their way in? I don't know, but I think it's really smart that they are doing this deal. Um, I didn't know Paramount had debt, but most companies have debt in this country, so it's really interesting. Um, and a smart way of using this to bring in more media into their fold and more things that they can do collaboratively because it says they already do quite a few collaborations on the production side mm -hmm. with Sky Skydance. Uh, it says that, <clears throat> what I read there said that there are quite a few films that have been co-funded by Paramount. Mm -hmm. So if you already have a good working relationship, why not? Yeah. You know, and then now you can add some of those characters to your amusement parks. This is true. This is true. You can't do that in all the hotels and things, the themed right. hotels they have. And all right, you, you can know. do the Star Trek themed hotel, you know. You know, there's a Nickelodeon themed hotel. Yep. So, why not? Maybe Zack Snyder did that. Uh, never mind. Dan Schneider. Oh, <laughs> what to say to you? And I know hey, this is Let's move on. I think that's Let's what move I'm on. Saying. Well, let's move on. The Joker 2 trailer dropped yesterday, last night. What the world needs now is love. Sweet love, it's the only thing that there's just too little love. Can't help yourself, huh? One thing about Dash, <laughs> Dash is going to sing for y'all whether you like it or not. And you better like it, because I'll fight mm -hmm. you. Nope, no fighting here. Well, the trailer is out. Uh. I gotta be honest, I have mixed feelings about the trailer. I remember the article we read recently. Yeah. Right on this very platform. Week that night. said Joker will be a jukebox musical. Yes. With with at least 15 songs. Yep. Triple fives. Uh being put into this film and being uh, you know, scenes in this film. Yeah, that's what they I said. also see that once again, we are changing the story of the Joker. Because Harley Quinn was not an inmate when they met. She was his psychiatrist. And so once again, they have said, hey, we're doing whatever the hell we want because we've been given license to do so. Yeah. Which always makes me nervous, I'm going to be honest, because when you take the story of a character and say, we're going to remove everything about this character and do completely what we want, that is sometimes a shit show, and that makes me nervous. Uh, the first Joker movie is really not the Joker story. They just made up some shit, and it worked. And so they are making up some shit again in hopes that it works. Now, the first Joker film was a billion-dollar-plus film, and that's why they've been greenlit to do another one. Uh, I also did not see Bradley Cooper's name here in these credits, but I do remember that we looked on IMDb, and it did say he was involved. Maybe he just wasn't in the credits of the trailer. So I still have high hopes for the Bradley Cooper involvement. We also know Todd Phillips and Bradley Cooper work well together. And of course, we know, just reiterating what we said last time, that Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga have a relationship and have worked together before a relationship in film, not saying hanky-panky, 
because they have worked together before. They worked together very closely on the set of A Star is Born, the fourth iteration. And um, clearly in this trailer, they are highlighting Lady Gaga slash the Harley Quinn character. Um, and it's pretty clear that this is going to be another mindfuck of a movie. Uh, it's pretty clear in the trailer to me that they're saying the musical things will be the things happening in their minds uh, because it says music allows us to escape reality and fix ourselves and blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, that was smart. That's cool. I have mixed feelings on this trailer. Certain parts look like, no, I don't want to watch this at all. Other parts look like, okay, this might be fly. And that makes what? me nervous. Which part made you say, no, I don't want to watch this at all? Give me an example. Um, them dancing in, on the stage as a big grand production. Okay. And Joker in all white on the set of what is clearly a musical. I don't like musicals. I don't either, to be honest. So I don't, since they said this is going to be a jukebox musical, I was already turned off to this. This is not the show for that. <laughs> but because neither of us, neither of us care for musicals. So it's, it's already like, we already have a bias, I think. But to me, I was intrigued. I, I, I thought it looked, I thought it looked interesting. I saw the first one. Um, I thought that was interesting. Um, I didn't have any preconceived, you know, there was, there was, there was nothing that I thought was going to happen or anything like that. So I kind of just went, and, uh, well, I didn't go into the movies. I watched it on a plane. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. I feel better about it now that I've seen this. Maybe because it didn't, I do like the concept of this is all in our heads, you know? So when you hear the music, it's like a um, dream sequence type of, type of thing. I'm okay with that. If we can differentiate between that and real life, then- Oh, I don't think you will. That was the whole point of the first movie. That the, still to this gonna... day- Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's supposed to be a mind-bending thriller. Like, that's really what Joker 1 was. You don't know if any of that stuff happened, happened or if it was all him just, you know, thinking, bugging right. out, right. Uh, hallucinating. Right. So you don't know which parts of the movie happened, which parts of the movie didn't happen. Did any of it happen? Did it just happen? Was it a memory? Was it a vision of the future? You don't know any of it. Well, I think that'll be interesting with Harley Quinn there. It mm -hmm. kind of creates an extra layer to that because yeah. we're now not only looking at it through his perspective, we're looking at it through her perspective. So I kind of want to see it. <laughs> yeah, I got to be honest. I don't like that it seems in the trailer like she's a fan of his. And that's why, like... His groupie is gonna be his girlfriend. I did. I did catch that. Like she's kind of she's watching him. She's admiring him. She says, "You know, I want to know the real you." And you know, yeah, I caught that. Which having that grow out of obsession when it's already, like you said, mind bending. And there's already that element of um, these things that are happening that might be there or might not be there. Kind of feel like it all ties into the theme. That may not necessarily be the story that exists out in the world already, but I well, none of this, none of this is. They have they have free range to do whatever they want. DC has made it clear this is a Elseworld, quote unquote, which in the comics was a random story or series that does not exist with the main story. Yeah. So, um, I don't remember what I was going to say, but I think it looks interesting. I think it does. 
Got you. Yeah, I don't I don't know about this. One. Sorry. I think I might see this one. Yeah, I don't know if I will. I don't, 15, 15 not, songs are a lot, a lot of songs. I'm not I'm not not excited about the sing songy parts of it. But I am curious to see how how they tell the story. That's what I'm curious about. You mean how they sing their way through it? Sure. I also just think it's a cheat code. Like you already got Lady Gaga, who's super famous and this has a huge following. Terrible. I'm sorry? I said which is why they give her roles like that. Yeah, but like if Lady Gaga is an actress and that's where she's doing things now, then let her be an actress. Why do we have to why do we have to appeal to her fan base and create a role that's going to be catered to her specifically? Like, why does she have to be singing and dancing? It's a cheat code. It's like you're going to put Michael Jackson in a movie and just have him moonwalking all over the movie. Like, Well, you saw what happened when she did House of Gucci. People loved House of Gucci. People oh. thought she did an amazing job of House of Gucci. I think she just played herself. I think she didn't do much in House of Gucci. Right. I think it was an easy role for her to play. And that's, my, that's part of my beef. And I'm, Lady Gaga fans are probably going to come for me. But I just feel like let her really dive in and act if she wants to act. But that's kind of how I feel. Like, I am a Lady Gaga fan. I've been a Lady Gaga fan since Poker Face, since the beginning. So, okay. I like Lady Gaga. Love her music. I like that she stepped into this lane and has beefed up the acting. I agree. I don't think that every role needs to be sing-songy. But I also wasn't wasn't particularly excited about House of Gucci. I and that may not just be a Lady Gaga thing. That may be the film as a whole. I didn't think the film was an incredible film. Um I thought it was okay. But you know we've talked about whenever you watch a film like that that it's how what is your expectation supposed to be? Um when they're telling a story about something that actually happened, like you, right. can, you can only ask for so much. So I'm, it's always complicated for me with stuff like that. But I didn't, I didn't think that her, I didn't think that that was so phenomenal. That oh my gosh, give her the the, the Oscar. I didn't feel like yeah, that me either. So, so I agree with you. I think that she needs to be given the opportunity to to um to do other things. And I hope yeah. that this is not like. I hope that she's not going to be typecast into this sing-songy actress. Although yeah. I think it's, I think to some degree she likes it, right? That's her that's her that's something uh, she can be. Okay. Let me go play a rapper. Wow. Oh man. Yeah, I can play a rapper, sure. Well it's, well, it's it's still it's still something she does for work. So if you can have an easy if you can have an easy role that is successful and makes a lot of money, I don't know that that's a bad thing. But I think I, I think if she wants to be an actress, then let's let her be an actress. Meaning, let her really dive into the acting chops. Let her get a challenging role where she has to push the limits of her herself of her acting so we could see what Lady Gaga can really do because actually even though it might sound like I'm hating I'm not hating I would like to see what Lady Gaga can really do like I would like to have a moment where I'm like holy shit did you see what Lady Gaga did okay perfect example is Heath Ledger a lot of people did not like Heath Ledger as an actor they had mixed feelings about him and the roles he took but that Joker role which sadly he passed after, but that Joker role would have defined his career even if he was still alive today. Even if Keith Ledger was still alive today, excuse me, Heath Ledger, not Keith Ledger. Even if Heath Ledger was still alive today, people would say, yo, but that Joker role, wow, phenomenal role. That one really showed us your acting chops and how, how much you could really fucking go in. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. 
I would love to have that moment from Lady Gaga where I'm like, holy shit. Hey, did you see the shit with Lady Gaga? Yo, that, that movie was so crazy. I had to see it three times in theaters. I bought I the Blu-ray because I want to see the special features of her doing blah, blah, blah. I agree. I think she's capable of it. So I don't know. I think she's capable of it. I'm not I saying think... yes or no. I'm saying I don't know because they keep giving her this. Well, I'm saying for me, I think she's capable of it. Mm. Maybe the role hasn't happened yet. I mean, some people feel like it was a star is born, but I'm just saying. That... You mean where she played herself? It yes, but it did really. It performed really well. Um, okay. so that's why I'm saying some people, I'm not saying this person, I'm saying some people thought that already. Yes, you are so correct. Okay. I do, I do think that she is capable. I don't think she's a bad actress at all. I think, that no, I don't think that either. I think that she's capable. I think that she could land a, a role that is like, oh my gosh, she completely blows us out of the water. And there, yeah, there will probably be a lot of people in the comments who say she's done it already. I don't know that I believe that. I don't but, think so. And I think that's why I didn't really, I wasn't too drawn to A Star is Born because I felt that way about A Star is Born. I was like, oh, she's kind of playing herself. herself. No. Like in a different city. <laughs> Just right. to me, it was like, oh, okay, well, yeah. And, and honestly, if I was a singer, who was who was launching my acting career? I'd probably do something like that too because sure. at least at least I'm able to show you on my chops. You know, at least at least this is a role I know I can land. So I don't know. I think I think this will be. I want to see this for that reason. Also, um, I want to I want to see what else she can do because I do think she's capable of a lot. Um, I think she's a really interesting actress. I think she can play like the darker roles and I want to see more of that from her. I'm not saying she should only play that. I'm just saying, I think that, I think that her strength will be in something like this. So I'm curious. I, I, I don't like musicals, but I'm curious about it. Usually when I'm curious, that's enough for me. I can go and check it out. And, you know, if I don't like it, then I didn't like it. If, if it's good, then I'll tell a friend. I'm, I'm quite conflicted on this one. I got to be honest. Well, maybe they'll show you something between now and October that will change your mind. Or maybe not. Maybe not. I guess we'll see. On and on that week. note, oh, take it away, kid. On another weeknight. And at this time, this is the end of this weeknight. And Correct. we're going to go until tomorrow. So it's been fun. It's been real. It's been real fun. But we out. Bye.